welcome back to the channel. Uh, I just can't help myself. I, if you didn't watch the video where I ripped this log down, I'm going to be chainsawing, saw, milling this big log. And I just ripped a chunk off it, and now I'm debarking it. And I can't, I just couldn't help myself. I might as well show you how I debark logs. Uh, I've got all this bark down here that I just ripped off it. Show you what I use, show you how I do it, show, it how, show you how it goes. Uh, it does not always go this easy. This log has not been down very long. Uh, it got dropped off maybe a month ago. Uh, fresh cut like a month ago. So it hasn't been down all that long. It's a big white pine. Uh, and I'm just tearing the bark off it right now. I want to show you how. Uh, I know that a lot of people have questions about that. If you didn't watch a previous video where I ripped that chunk off it over there, that's a big chunk. It's probably close to 20, almost 24 wide. Get my foot in there for scale. It's a pretty big chunk. If you didn't see me rip that off the side of it, that side that I ripped off it is down right now. I am getting ready to set up on this thing to chainsaw mill it. I got my ladder out here. I just trimmed this end here on the sides to 46 inches wide. So I had to trim this side here and that side there. So my 56 bar, 56 inch bar on my 48 inch mill will fit all the way through this. And now there was a bunch of mud in the bark, so I'm taking the bark off. So to get you guys a good view. Oh, uh, do I have my mics on? Yeah, I have my mics on. Maybe over here. Where's Danny? Oh, there's Danny over there. See him? He's chilling out. He's happy I'm home. I'll rip all the bark or try to rip all the bark off this side and I'll show you what I use. So I use, um, I call it a bark spud, but it's really like an edger or an ice chipper. You can get these. I'll get around the back so I can point it out. You can get these at, uh, you know, your local hardware store. My label's all ripped off this one. It's got single Oh, there we go. I can see now. Single bevel on it. So you can see this side's flat. Single bevel. You don't want to make these too sharp. And you want to keep that bevel about 30 degrees if you grind it. Um, and what you want to do is you don't want to... So here's the bevel like this, right? You don't want to put the bevel up so the bottom of it digs into the wood. You want to run it bevel down so the bevel rides on the wood. And don't expect this just to, you know, go like it's opening up its vagina to me. It just doesn't work that way sometimes. I'll try to give you guys a good view. And you can pry either way. You can pry up or you can pry down. I think if you pry this way, you have more likely to maybe break the bark spud, the ice chipper thing, whatever you want to call it. But if you leave it beveled down, it won't dig in. You can kind of ride along the wood, try to find your way underneath the loose bark. Sometimes it comes off and sometimes it doesn't. So I, I am not going to portray this as this works all the time. Sometimes the bark is too tough to come off. But this is the best way that I've ever done it. I've been using one of these a long time. I've had this a long time. I don't know how many times I've ground the tip. Uh you go back in my videos, you'll probably see this maybe at least six, seven years back, chainsaw milling. Let's see if I can find another good spot to get under it. And like I said, sometimes you can get under it, sometimes you can't. When I can't, I don't waste my time trying to. Uh, sometimes there are just pieces of bark that just hold on too tight, and it's not worth the time to try 
to get them off. Sometimes everything's loose and it all just comes right off. But anything helps. This is going to help when I'm when I'm milling this with a 56 inch bar full comp. I think that's a hundred and 68 drive links. Uh, you know, any way that I can keep my teeth sharper a little bit longer is going to be great because it's obviously it's uh, a big sharpen. I could probably get through a 56 inch bar in about I don't know five or six minutes aside, something like that. If it hasn't hit anything, and all I'm doing is sharpening the teeth. All you do is just find your way under a loose set, and sometimes it'll just all fall right off like that. This is going to be a short video, just doing this quick. Pretty much all of it off now, pretty much the whole thing's debarked. I'll show you in one second. Like I said, if you find bark that just won't come off, just don't worry about it. You're... Sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't. So, I'll give you a look at that. Actually, I might be able to get off a little bit. Yep, down here too. Just try to kind of ride the bevel underneath. If you go like this, if you have it beveled down so you can ride along the wood without digging in, it'll shoot up underneath the bark. If you have it beveled down, I mean bevel up, the sharp edge is down, and the sharp edge will dig into the wood, and you'll just go like like that see that you don't want that that's why i run a bevel up i'm sorry that's why i run a bevel down this one little piece there i can probably get off Oops. or fall down one of the two I'm going to mill it right where it is. I tried to set it up on top of my little monster pallet here, and I broke most of the pallet because this log's so heavy. I didn't really anticipate that. I tried to set it flat side down and uh, busted through the pallet. I'll show you that too. And I'm testing out these new mechanics gloves. So give you a look at what how it came out. So you can kind of see that whole side's pretty much bark free. The whole top's pretty much bark-free. This whole side's pretty much bark-free, except for that one spot down there. I might try a little bit there, too, because I can see some dirt in it. Uh, not sure which way I'm going to mill, but I think, I think I'm going to mill it. Well, I wanted to get it up on the pallet so that I'm not kneeling on the ground. Uh, it looks like it might be a little higher there than it is here, so I'm going to try and mill downhill, so I might mill from the other side. We're going to see, and that will be a separate video. So let's see if I can get some of this off here where it's dirty, since we're only like a couple minutes in here. I don't know if I can or not. We'll try, though. Give it the college try. Actually, you're going to be looking right at my back, so... get you like that so basically what I'm trying to do is right now the bevel's down so it slides <laughs> oh she saw came right off how do you like that okay. yeah so that worked out great so now there's basically no bark on it and I'm ready to set this thing up for chainsaw milling so I get my ladder on it and it'll be a separate video but I'll give you a little clue in uh, set you up like this. So I'm going to put my ladder up on top. Whoa, big chunk of pitch. Oh, shit. These gloves are going to get a good workout. I will pick my flatter side of the ladder, and there will be a flatter side. back you up a little bit and I'll explain a couple things to you 
just give you some bonus material. If you don't want to watch this, sign off. If you're not in the chainsaw milling. So what I do is I screw on a two by four on here that supports the ladder and then one on the other end. And I shave that other end to give me a flat spot to do that. Um, then I will check this ladder for twist. And uh, what I mean by that is, let me just look down at, all right, there's a bump on this side. I know it's the other side, it's flatter. Ooh. This edge on this side's flat. This edge has got a pretty good little dip in it. Um, this ladder, most likely, most likely, most likely, is going to be twisted like this. In other words, that corner and the far back corner won't be coplanar. It'll be twisted like that almost all the time. It's never going to be perfect. So what we do is we put winding sticks on it. We screw one end in with the two by four. And then the other end, we screw one side in, whatever is the low side. And then we twist the high side up after we have some brackets on it. And I'll show you the brackets that I use so that you can twist the ladder until you looking down your winding sticks, you're flat. And it's much more accurate than uh, trying to do it with a level. It just is, uh, you know, your level will get you close. But with winding sticks, I don't have to be level, just have to be coplanar. So if you look like this, if the ladder was like that, the winding sticks, one would be pointed like that, one would be pointed like that. Basically, we're going to twist the ladder until the top of the front winding stick matches the eyeballing down it, matches the other winding stick so that one corner is not higher than the other. And you can get it super, super, super close. Now, big slabs like this doesn't really matter, but any little bit you can take out helps. So that's what I have always tried to do. Always try to take the twist out of the slabs. It just makes it so that it's going to be simpler because most of it in the past, when I started doing this, I was working with them. So it just makes it so that they're easy to work with down the road. I can don't have a lot to do to them. So I'm going to show you that too when I get the chainsaw mill on it. But for now, um, that's debarking 101. You could go along with a small chainsaw and do it if the bark won't come off. Uh, you could even just kind of shave off the areas where you're going to be cutting. Wouldn't take very long. Uh, you know, a very small saw. The debarkers, I wouldn't waste my money on them, to be honest with you. They're a little bit dangerous. They don't work great. You're not going to be able to sharpen them if you're the average person. You know, the bark spud works great. If you want to mill a log, you can let it sit around a little while. Let it sit around a couple of months. Uh, and then the bark will come off much easier. If you need to do it right away, take a chainsaw, just kind of chalk a line down or something where your saw is going to be going if it's wicked dirty. Then just go along with the chainsaw and just shave off the bark where your line is. It's a lot easier to sharpen a chainsaw chain than it is those little uh, knives on those rotary ones that you have to mount on your chainsaw, rotary debarker. So, but this works terrific. It's what I use 99% of the time. And if I can't get the bark off, most of the time I just grab a brush, brush it off and go to milling. And if I have to sharpen, I got to sharpen. But that's uh, debarking 101 for now. For Danny and myself, Fire Solutions out.